Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, coming to you from the lovely neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Have you connected with us online yet? You can find us at facebook.com slash reading with your kids. On Twitter, we are at Jedly Magic. And on Instagram, it's reading with your kids. We have a wonderful guest for you today. He is the author of Awesome Dog 5000. You are going to love meeting Justin Dean. Speaking of uh, people that you are going to love meeting, have you met The Great Maritini yet? I think you will love meeting The Great Maritini. The Great Maritini is my debut picture book. It is Story Monsters Approved. I'm so, so very proud of that. And it tells the story of Sam, an aspiring and some would say clumsy magician. He's constantly making mistakes on stage. And that's hilarious. Kids love that. Parents, you're going to love the fact that the great Maritini, he has a lot of grit. He believes in himself, and he doesn't let the fact that he's making mistakes hold him back. And and that self-confidence enables him to learn how to perform amazing things on stage. You are also going to love that, that the great Maritini discovers that the greatest transformation of all isn't turning turning pieces of silk into this giant, beautiful fabric. But, but the greatest transformation of all is transforming feelings of caring into action to help another human being. I, I'm really, really proud of this book. I, I love the fact that families love it, and I think your family would love it too. And I would be honored if you would take a moment to check out the book and consider adding it to your family library. My incredibly talented niece, Tiffany Dari, provided the illustrations for this book. I think you're going to love it. You can read it for free via Kindle Unlimited, and you can also purchase the book at Amazon.com. Joining us on the line right now from Southern California, he is the author of a really fun middle grade series. It's his debut book, and we're talking about book one in the series. Uh, the name of the book is Awesome Dog 5000. Please welcome to the show, Justin Dean. Justin, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to have you here. My uh, Augie the Wonder Dog is watching my back here in the studio, and he's real excited to learn all about Awesome Dog 5000. Tell us about this story, please. Uh, yeah, so Awesome Dog 5000 is a story about uh, a kid named Marty who moves to a new town, and uh, he makes two friends at school who love video games just as much as he does. And uh, while Marty's at his new house, all three friends discover a mysterious robot dog that was left there by an inventor who used to live in the house. Uh, the dog has a bunch of uh, wild inventions, that he, uh, wild gadgets that he can use, uh, like fly really fast with turbo cannon, with turbo jets and fire a mega cannon. And having all of this crazy power uh, ends up um, crossing paths with a mad scientist and who gets really mad at the dog for destroying his mansion and so he plots his revenge on awesome dog and the three kids and away the adventure goes that's really cool and and and, you know it starts at a place where a a lot of kids uh find themselves the the new kid at school and that that seems to be one of those universal experiences that so many kids have and so many kids fear yeah absolutely and that comes from a that comes from a real place um i growing up i moved around a lot so i actually went to uh six different schools every year i started every school year at a new school growing up um so when it came time to write the book um there was that real element of like okay i wanted to have this idea of this i had this idea of this kid who discovers this uh mysterious robot dog and obviously it came up with like, okay, how does this come about? And when the idea was, what if he discovers it in a new house that he comes into, then obviously I peppered in my own backstory of like, okay, well, he's in this new house because he moves to this new town um, and he doesn't know anybody. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of baggage of fear involved with that of, of being afraid that you're not going to fit in and not know anybody and being completely out of your comfort zone. And, um, yeah, and so I wanted to bring that into the story of of making a, you know, emotional connection with kids when they read the book. 
Wow. Well, moving moving to a new school every year is, is is something that I absolutely cannot relate to at all. I grew up in a neighborhood. <laughs> I grew up in a neighborhood in Boston, and it's the same neighborhood my parents grew up in. So, I went to the same school, elementary school, and I had some of the same teachers my mother had. <laughs> and she's oh, like, wow. she's like, my mother's like, how is she still alive? She was ancient when I was in third grade. <laughs> But That's it is funny. it is a situation that more and more kids find themselves in these days because we are becoming a much more mobile society. That neighborhood that I that I referenced that I grew up in has completely changed. It was uh, mm. at, at you know, one time it was a low when I was it was a low income neighborhood. Right now, all, all the apartments go for like a million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, it's changed. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is. Uh, your your debut book. What what was it that inspired you to to become an author? We we learned a little bit about you know using your history of of, of moving around and and being very familiar, being the, the the new kid in school. But what was it that inspired you to write and especially write for middle grade audiences? Yeah, so I've been a writer for since I got out of college. Um, I've written a bunch of different things. Uh, I've worked in uh, entertainment marketing, so I used to make television commercials and movie trailers. Uh, and then um, I've also worked on the side a little bit, and I've done some stuff with uh, animation and animated shorts. And how the journey got to books is – um, me and my friend, we were, were working on animated shorts for a couple of toy companies and we would go in and we'd pitch a bunch of ideas and, you know, a couple of them work, a couple of them wouldn't work. And, um, my wife suggested me, she's like, you know, Justin, you're having such a good time coming up with these, uh, ideas for toys for kids and, um, that maybe you could, uh, you know, transition into putting that into your love of writing to actually do like a long form thing. And uh, I thought it was a great idea, and I just needed an idea, um, uh, an idea for the book. And um, I had this idea of um, doing a kid who gets a uh, robot for his birthday. His grandfather gives it to him. And it wasn't quite right, so I kind of shelved the idea and didn't think of it anymore. And then um, my son, I, when I was driving to school one day, he was talking about how he wanted a pet. And I asked him what kind of pet he wanted, and... He said he didn't want a turtle because they didn't really do anything, and, and birds <laughs> didn't really interest him, and cats were kind of lazy and didn't do much. And he said he really wanted a dog because if you got a dog, you could teach him how to do how to do tricks, how they can roll over and speak and jump and fetch, and it was amazing. And I was just like, well, that's great. And I was like, well, would you name the dog? And he's like, I named the dog Awesome Dog because he could do anything. <laughs> And at that point, it was like a light bulb clicked, and I was like, I have to get home and write this down. And so those two ideas of the kid who gets his birthday gift of a robot transitions into a kid who discovers a robot dog who could do anything, and what would you do with that kind of uh, that kind of amazing power? Is it, isn't it wise, and, and, and if there are any young men listening out there it's always it's always a great idea to listen to your wife because they have such great ideas <laughs> they know us much better than absolutely. we know ourselves and absolutely <laughs> and the same goes with our kids from out of the mouths of babes some fantastic ideas come out and and, and they're just you know we always thinking oh my dad i have to inspire my kids but so often kids inspire us yeah, I mean, speaking well, speaking on the first point, uh, I owe my entire career uh, one thousand percent to my wife. Um, the whole thing of me getting into animation, which led to the toy thing, which led to the book thing, was her. Uh, she was talking to me about getting back into drawing again because I had stopped for so many years, and she suggested I remember very clearly on Thanksgiving I was sitting around with with my friend who I ultimately ended up doing animation with, and she was like, Justin, I really think that you need to go back into this. I think you'd have a good time doing it. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And then I ultimately did it, loved it. And then she about the book. She said, I think you should really write a book. I think that you'd be really good at it. And having that voice that push continually when there's, you know, obviously as a writer, there's so much doubt in what you're doing was amazing and ultimately, you know, paid off really well. So yeah, I, I all, all praise goes to my wife. Um, <laughs> and as far as with my son goes, uh, yeah, I mean, he is the ultimate sounding board, and I feel like 
very blessed that I have a, a test audience in, uh, you know, the bedroom down the hall is that I go in all the time and I go, okay, I got this great idea. And I'll pitch him an idea um, that I think is fantastic. And then he'll say something like, oh, yeah, that's funny, Dad. And I know immediately that that's a bad idea because if I don't get an immediate <laughs> laugh out of him, I'm like, okay, okay. So if it's just, oh, that was funny, Dad. It's like, yeah, he was being polite. He didn't like that at all. So if I can say, what about, and then I pitch an idea and he laughs, and he's like, oh, that's that's so crazy, Dad. Well, that's so wild. Then I'm like, all right, bingo, we did it. There we did go. it. That's, that's an idea i got to put in the book. <laughs> well, that, you know – that's beautiful, and it's it's great that you understand your audience, because <laughs> because so many times we don't. And uh, the other thing that you you hit on, and and I want to talk a little bit about it because I think it's really important for us as parents to encourage our kids to try and to not be afraid of failing. You know, you're talking about you know working with toy companies and pitching them ideas and. So you, you'd pitch a, a bunch of ideas, and some of them would, would, would flop and fail, but it's okay because you have these other ideas, and, and eventually all you need is one or two to hit, and, and, and that's successful. And I think there are a lot of people, and especially kids, that are afraid to share their ideas and to pitch their ideas. Yeah, I mean, one of the themes that's a recurrent theme in the series is, is, is the idea of failure and the idea of what do you do with failure? What do you learn from the, the failures that you have and how failure, if you keep going and you keep working, will ultimately lead to some level of success. And it's just about how you um, learn from each of those failures. And, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, you know, it's the thing as a writer, you deal with rejection a lot. Um, getting this book made, I've dealt with, dozens and dozens of rejection letters and you you have to just reading those rejection letters you're like okay what do i what do i learn from this and some of the ones that i got that i was fortunate enough to get some feedback from i realized like okay and so i'd read i'd tweak the story a little bit or i would change some dynamics that i that that they thought was missing and as far as coming from a marketing background you know and when i would pitch stuff for the animation thing um yeah, it's a thing where you have to realize that, like, not every idea is going to be amazing, but that's okay because you might get one little kernel of of a character out of this idea. Or you might get a kernel of a plot out of this idea that can be applied to and changed into something amazing down the road. Mm-hmm. I like to, to compare it to, you know, I grew up in the shadow of, of Fenway Park here in Boston, and, uh, you know, the, the greatest hitter ever that played for the Red Sox, well, he's the greatest player hitter ever was Ted Williams and and he failed 60% of the time when he got up to bat but but he was right. the greatest hitter and so I mean if you if you kind of look at, at that it's like you don't have to have a home run every time you get up to bat every time you pitch an idea but you can build on that and I think yeah. it's so important for us as parents to uh, remind our kids that you know not everything's you're not going to hit everything out of the park uh, a lot of times you're going to swing and miss, but it's important to get up there and, and keep trying and keep pitching and, and keep working and believing in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It's the only way to get better at anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, whether it be baseball or writing or painting or anything, is is that you have to try and you have to be okay with the fact that you're not going to be amazing at it right out of the gate. But, you know, 10,000 hours later, you actually might make something or be something pretty good. Talk. You tell us. You told us about the inspiration of the story and and having that conversation with your son and 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 coming up with the idea of a robot dog and and you talked a little bit about going you know tweaking it as you the, the rejections came in. What about the process of what what kind of process did you go to to get from that inspiration with your son to the the rejection letters to ultimately being published? Uh, yeah. So the original the original book manuscript that was written i didn't illustrate it and i didn't feel confident enough in my illustrations um to do it so i wrote the manuscript and then sent it out and uh cross the board rejection and um i rewrote it and i still was like i don't know um and once again my wife was like i just think you should just do the illustrations yourself and so i was like okay so then i took some time um and i did all of the illustrations myself, 160 of them or however many it was. 
And it's funny is that some of the, as, as the book goes on, illustrations get a little bit better because I, <laughs> as we talked about of like, you know, working and get uh, ironing out the details. Uh, yeah, I got a little better as an illustrator. Um, but then I sent it out again and, um, yeah, it was this really amazing process happened. So I, I once again still got a bunch of rejections, but, uh, I started to get asks for reads from the book because I actually had something to show as far as the dummy, um, the, uh, like, a, a, a simulated version of the book where the illustrations were in with the manuscript. And uh, I asked for, got a couple of reads, people, agents asking to read it. And then one agent was like, this is, these first five chapters are great. Do you have the rest of the book? And I said, yeah, I did the whole book. Um, and I sent it to her and she was like, I think we can, I think we can get this made. And then it, it was literally like three months later that she was having a dinner, I think, with someone at Random House. And uh, my editor, who's my editor now, got a hold of the book, and she really liked it. And she gave it to her friends, and uh, away we went. Yeah, she was like, "Let's let's do it." I really liked the book, so it was a super fast process. It was it was wild and almost surreal how it went from you know two years to get the book to where it was good enough to get picked up by an agent and then all of, you know, a handful of months to becoming on the road to getting it published. Well, well, you know, that's the story of a lot of overnight successes, you know, (laughs) folks, you know, in the trenches working really hard for two or three or five years. And then it goes from zero to a hundred like overnight. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's what, I mean, it's the thing where I have worked, like I said, I worked as a writer for you know over 10 years and to have this level of success in this short amount of time space is is i'm once again i'm blessed i'm very thankful um so appreciative because it's a very wild ride well one of the things when when, when the folks at uh, our friends at random house pitched it to me um one of the things i read was that there was it, it the, the book was fart joke heavy and i love that <laughs> that's unfortunate <laughs> I, I I wouldn't qualify it as fart joke heavy, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but that's the that well, I was gonna say that's the humor the kids like. It's the humor that I like, and it's been a it's been decades since I was a kid. <laughs> but but to, you yeah, know, no. to, just talk about oh, that I'm, that kind of humor and and uh, you know if you love it as much as I do. <laughs> well, the 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 thing about that is. Uh, me and my writing partner, when we did the animation stuff, the, the rule was always you're allowed to give yourself one really gross joke and one kind of <laughs> gross joke in everything that you wrote, right? And so when I wrote uh, Awesome Dog, I think what ended up happening was, one, the really gross joke really worked really well. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll, I'll come back to it for a callback once or twice. And I think obviously that resonated very well with the publicity department at <laughs> Random House. <laughs> but no, I don't tend to. I don't tend to lean into gross out humor. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, it's a it's an easy it's an easy laugh. So I'll I'll, I'll use it occasionally. Well, it's a lot of fun. And when you're writing for middle grade kids, um, there that's what they love. And that's not to yeah. say that they're simple or you know not not thoughtful. It's just fun. I mean, you know, you're in a crowded elevator and it slips out. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard funny. To it's always funny. And yeah, no matter how old you get, it's still funny. Yeah. Well, where, what's your idea? So I don't give us away too much about the series, but but uh, is is Marty going to be moving from place to place with Awesome Dog or is he going to stay at, in that one situation? No, so the entire series takes place over the course of a, a year, a year and a half at the school. And it's re- the overall arc of the entire series is about Marty and Skylar and Ralph's evolution to become superheroes in this small town. And so each book is about a, a new villain that shows up. Um, yeah, and so each, one, each, each book is them learning a new uh aspect of how to be a hero or how to be a better person um in general yeah now i'm wondering I, I, i'm wondering uh, your son who's so in, instrumental in inspiring you to write this book and i imagine as you're writing it you're bouncing some ideas off him so he was very familiar with it did did he love it when the when the when the 
book was finally finished, and, and, and did he love the final product? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's been a huge fan of the book. But it's the thing where, like, people don't – well, I mean, obviously someone like you does, but, but I didn't realize the distance between when the book's completed as far as, like, in-house completed as it's gone through copy editing and the, the creative directors sign off on all the art and everything – so when the book comes out, there's so much distance between that mm-hmm. that it's exciting. But at the same time, like my headspace right now is I'm finishing up the illustrations for book two right now. I have about three or four left. And then I'm writing book three concurrently at the same time. And then I'm outlining book four. And then I'm thinking of ideas for books five and six. So it's it's exciting. It's so amazing to, you know, go into the bookstore and see the book in its final form. But, you know, my son was like, oh, cool. And he was, I think he was more excited when I gave him the poster to put on his wall than the actual physical book because he had the actual book in his hands. Because when I finished it, uh, I actually went to a print shop and had the book made, like bound and made because mm-hmm. I wanted to actually see what it was like to actually feel a book that I wrote. So he has a book that was like two years ago that was a makeshift version of Awesome Dog. Uh, that he'll probably sell on eBay when he gets older. <laughs> but, but yeah, that he, so when the book actually, actually came out, uh, he was like, oh, this is very cool. And then he just put it on the shelf with his other awesome dog book. Well, I, I have to ask, I, it, it just seems like a, a, like a natural. You have a background in animation and, uh, and toys. And, and you gotta do something to make that original awesome dog book that your son has, uh, especially valuable. Are, are you looking to do, uh, an animated series of awesome dog? Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> if anybody's listening, I'll take any offers available. <laughs> I would love to, yeah. <laughs> well, well, that would that would make that that first book like super, super valuable. I imagine it, it could, it could help him go through, through college. <laughs> yeah, sure. Where can folks find out more about Awesome Dog 5000 and find out more about Justin Dean? Yeah, so uh, Awesome Dog 5000 is in all bookstores where books are sold. Um, the audio book is out um, if you're interested in that as well. Um, you can go on Random House's website to purchase it at any outlet. Um, you can find out more about me at justinwritesbooks.com. Uh, I have tour dates listed there. I go on tour in a couple months, and I do library visits. Um, throughout L.A. Um, and uh, starting, I guess, in September, I'm going to Oklahoma to do a couple uh, visits as well. Well, that sounds fantastic. And we want to get you in mentioning uh, that, that the next book will be coming out and hopefully in the spring. So I, I want to yeah, make- March. Yeah, March 3rd, the, the next book comes out March 3rd. Well, we want to give you an open invitation to come back and celebrate that book here on the show. And since you're right, you're thinking about f- book four and book five, it looks like you'll be uh, a guest uh, for a long time to come. Oh, I hope so. That would be, be great. We've been talking to the author of the great new middle grade book, Awesome Dog 5000, book one, and a really, really fun not necessarily fart joke heavy series. <laughs> the author is Justin Dean. Justin, thanks so much for being on the show. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We have a special treat for you. Karen Parsons, you may know her best as Hillary from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Karen Parsons will be in to talk about her middle grade book, How High the Moon, and also to speak about a really uh, a project that is very, very special to Karen called Sweet Blackberry. You don't want to miss it. It's a wonderful interview. The next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast, Karen Parsons. Hey, if you are the author of a great children's book, you may have discovered how difficult it is to let people know about your book. There are thousands of books Thousands of children's books published every year, it seems like every month, and, 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 and getting your book to stand out uh, amongst those new books, in addition to all the books that have already been published, it's so very, very difficult. Well, we have something that may help you. It's called the Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read Program. We have a team of evaluators there, their teachers, parents, and kids, and if they believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. And with that certification comes a lot of fantastic tools that can really help your book stand out 
amongst the crowd of, of uh, other books that are out there. And so many authors who have participated in the program uh, are so happy that, and, and they're so thankful of, of how the, the program has, has helped put a spotlight on their books and, and help their books get known. Check it out today. Go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Great Reads button and you can learn all about this great program. We want to thank the people who made today's show so very wonderful. want to thank Justin Dean. Be sure to check out Awesome Dog 5000. I also want to thank my producer, Fatima Khan. Check out Fatima's blog. She writes one for every episode of the show. You can find that at readingwithyourkids.com. I also want to thank my beautiful wife for all of the support she gives me. And, of course, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for being part of our show. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, on iTunes, wherever you find your podcast. And, of course, we want to thank you for, 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 for helping to make the world a better place. And you do that every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.